Easter's in full bloom at Whole Foods Market with great deals on spiral cut bone in ham and leg of lamb, both crowd pleasers. Round out your spread with quiche, deviled eggs, and delicious catering platters from prepared foods. Oh, and remember to pick up a Whole Foods Market bunny cake from the bakery. Strap for time? They cater too, with delicious options available without the effort. Find hundreds of Easter deals and delights now at Whole Foods Market. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites according to a recent Indeed survey. With Indeed, everything hiring is all in one place and it makes it so easy. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences each each day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. The more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join the more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash podcast. Just go to Indeed.com slash podcast right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Terms and conditions apply. Indeed.com slash podcast. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast, a brilliant true crime podcast hosted by two zany sisters, all while baking up delicious treats in their kitchen. Here are your podcast hosts, Karen Devaney and Ann Varner. Hey, y'all, it's Karen. Guess what? I royally screwed up this episode. So please stay till the end so you can hear me correct my mistake. I messed up so bad. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm here. I'm here too. We're here. We made it. We did it again. Oops. No. 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 Come on. I wanted to channel my inner Brittany. Don't do that. Why? Girl, be crazy. Sometimes I need to be crazy, Sean. Not like that crazy. I feel like like just every once in a while I need to be crazy. No, you are crazy. Are you sure? Uh, I don't think I am at all. I feel like I'm just so buttoned up and I just need to let it rip. You should let it rip, but calm down. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, now you're going to be Taylor Swift to my Britney Spears. You need to calm down. (laughs) Great. You Taylor Swift, my Britney Spears. Way to go. Well, isn't it ironic? (laughs) Oh, here come Alanis. Here she come. She she coming right now, girl. Yeah. So we're going to record an episode. We're on a roll. It's almost like we're podcasters. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it. It's a little weird. It's just, it's just whatever. It's just We're doing it. I mean, we're just doing doing it. Let's just do it. We're going to do it. So what did you cook? What did you cook for us? Oh, my gosh. It's like the redemption episode. I love a redemption. Yeah. We should have more of them. I got to thinking, I haven't had pound cake in forever. Oh, nobody nobody loves pound cake more than our family. Right. Right. And Mama's do. been staying with me, and yes. she loves. She pretty much adores an, a pound cake. An amaretta, uh, uh, not, not a cheesecake. Not cheesecake. Let's don't go there. An amaretta pound cake. Yes. So I thought, you know what? Damn it. I'm going to make it. Oh, sorry, Mama. Oh. I'm going to make that pound cake. It's okay, Mama, because it was for you that she was saying that. Right. They've been displaced by fire, so her recipes are currently somewhere being clean. So I didn't have the recipe that she usually uses. Piper, could you please stop? For- I've got my dogs in here with me tonight because the master of the castle is not here. So the dogs are in here, and Piper is just rooting through anything she can find. Excuse me. I was in the middle. I'm sorry. Of talking. It's, it's almost like I'm fault. insignificant. You're not insignificant. You are a rock. You're a superstar. I don't even know what I was seeing anymore. Mom anyway, is staying in with you. They've been replaced by cake. a fire, and now you made a pound cake with amaretto. I didn't have her recipes. That's what I was saying. Okay, yeah. The recipes are being cleaned. Yes. So I had to find hodgepodge of recipes and i think i knew which one she made but i wasn't for sure but i looked at the one she that she may have made and that it puts um a cream cheese in it and I, I don't need a cream cheese in a pound cake i don't think mama put cream cheese in her pound I, cake i don't know that doesn't seem like something mama would do it, it doesn't i don't even no. know i don't even know about that one but i went back and said you know what 
I'm going to make that million dollar pound cake. The one that you got drunk and failed? (laughs) The last time I was so drunk, it didn't work out. No. Mm -mm. This time I was stone cold sober and it turned out beautifully. I have to agree with you because I had a piece. Yeah. And it it was lovely. It was absolutely lovely. It was lovely. Now I did do a couple of things. To make it more amaretto-y. And that was, you know, for the million dollar pound cake, it's a Southern living recipe. So you can look that up online. Mm -hmm. Pound of butter, three cups of sugar, six large eggs, four cups of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a cup of milk, a teaspoon of almond extract, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And not one shred of cream cheese. No. Well, listen, I felt like that was a lot of milk. So I substituted (laughs) half that milk with amaretto. And that makes more sense to me than anything else in the world. Yeah. It just makes more sense. Yeah. And then, you know, when you cook it, all the alcohol cooks out. So Yes. And then you can't blame it on the alcohol. alcohol. Then I went in and found the the recipe that I think she used to use with the, the cream cheese. And at the end of that is a dank amaretta glaze. I love a glaze and you put amaretta in it and girl, I'm there. I love it. Listen, it combines amaretta and it also has butter. Oh, uh, two of my favorite things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't name my children butter and amaretta. I, oh, now amaretta would have been a beautiful, beautiful name. name. I agree. I don't think it's too late. We might be able to talk my daughter into changing her name to amaretta. I think we should just give it a try. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. She doesn't always get on board with our things. She doesn't. Okay. Give me the recipe for that glace. You're going to do butter Mm -hmm. and sugar Mm -hmm. and amaretto Mm -hmm. and a little bit of water. It'll be quite honest. And a little bit of chicken fry. No, there's no chicken (laughs) fry in the amaretto. I'm sorry. Ay, ay, ay. We should have had bourbon tonight. What were we thinking? Well, I'm all right. I got a half a bottle up Shoot, there. you really do. We could have just taken shots. Oh, shoot. We really could have. Next time. Next time for sure. Yeah. So you're going to put all that stuff in a pan and you're going to bring it to a bowl. Oh, and about that water, I maybe didn't put as much water as they called for. Because what's the point of putting water with That just rice? dilutes it. Exactly. You're going to bring it to a bowl, stir it constantly, and you're going to cook it for about a minute. Okay. Okay. Everybody's got time for that. And then you're going to remove it from the heat. And here is the best part. When you pull that million dollar pound cake with the amaretta instead of the milk out of the oven and it's beautiful, Mm -hmm. you're going to flip that cake out of the pan. Okay. And then you are going to pour every bit of that glaze on it. I mean, it's going to saturate it. I love that. I love you're it. You're gonna think this cake cannot possibly take any more of that glaze, but you're just gonna keep pouring it. Yeah, well, I'm sure that it can because it's pancake. Yes, just let it sink in there. Just let it sink in. All right. And then if for some reason it gets a little dry after a few days, which mine did not, but if yours did, you can make up some of that glaze. Well, I I just put. I don't know if it got dry or not because I put butter on it. Well, yeah, that's the way I serve it. I, <laughs> I toast it with butter on it. Yeah. And I think I even put a little ice cream. You in. did the night that I was there that I didn't have it that night. Yeah. But I had some one morning for my breakfast. Yeah. So if y'all want either one of those recipes, you'll have to email us and I will write out. Exactly yeah, she'll what write out what she did because it's not it, written anywhere else. Mm-mm. She when done created it, a whole like, thing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my glory. It was total redemption. I'm so glad. Cake. I'm so glad that it was redemption. Me too. And that you I had was... to do it sober. <laughs> I know. I, th- this is the, the first time I've made it since that one drunken night. Yeah. Well, that was a fun night, though. Yeah, I got no. Fun. I got no qualms about it. I got except I messed up my pancake, but that's it. Oh uh, yeah. So I got a little housekeeping to do. Oh okay. In our episode that we a couple episodes ago we did our current events our yes. new our so, you know that thing yeah yeah. And I talked about a court case that I was watching on court TV, and it was Joseph, I think his name is Zeiler. Okay. Zeiler. Whatever. He's a big old asshole. He's the one that raped and murdered the 11-year-old girl and her babysitter while the mom was out one night. And then he had the nerve to say that the reason he had his DNA was on the sheets is because he had had consensual sex with the mom. Eight months before, and she was so scuzzy that she didn't wash her sheets in eight months. Oh, my Lord. That's one of his things that he said in court. He's disgusting. He is disgusting. He also had written, while he was in jail, 
waiting for trial, he wrote to the mother at her place of residence, which was very alarming that he was able to find that information, and wrote her this letter threatening her to drop the charges as if she was the one charging him. See, he's such an idiot. And threatened to telling her that he would um, ruin her reputation and he would draw it out in court as long as possible and make her life a living hell. Had she moved since the said incident? Wasn't he at her house? I think Babies she had got moved. The oh, okay. I think she had moved. It was very alarming that, that he knew that address. Okay. To her, so it must be that she had moved. I can't imagine that you would stay in a place. I can't either. It was in a, and that was an apartment, I think, that she was oh, living oh, in at I the see. time. I see. So he just like really trashed this woman and her daughter, and it was just he was gross. He got convicted. Yay! Yay! He was sentenced to a death. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> But when they went to the sentencing hearing, this is what an asshole this guy is. He was in shackles and handcuffs. Okay. Of course. He looks like something somebody pulled out of a dumpster. Seriously. He just looks awful. His defense attorney was with him, of course, because it's the sentencing. And he said something. He was standing with two bailiffs beside him. And he whispered to the attorney to like come closer so he could tell him something. Right. And the attorney kind of bent down to hear what he had to say. Like he was going to say something in his ear Mm -hmm. and this guy took his elbow and went bam oh right in the nose of that attorney are you serious his defense attorney just because he could just because he's an asshole oh my gosh yeah so bye-bye i hope they put him to death really fast like he needs an express ticket I'm thinking maybe accidental step on an electrical cord when you get in the shower situation. I'm serious. Something needs to happen. He's going bye-bye, but, you know, it'll take a while before he actually gets put to death. And I feel real bad about that because I feel like this is a guy who should not waste another minute of our time breathing our air. Do you remember what state it was in? Lord have mercy. Oh, it's all right. No, I don't. It's okay. Hopefully the I want to say it might have been Florida. There have been a lot of Florida cases lately, oh, but right. it could have been a different right, right. one. Hopefully he's in a state where the death penalty sticks. Yeah, he is in a, I know that he's in a place where the death penalty sticks, but I don't know if it's one of the ones that has an express lane. So, oh, I see. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I mean, there's been such a shortage of the medicine they need to take care of that. Yeah. That a lot of states are having to figure out different ways. I thought it was really interesting that Brian Koberger, Uh the guy who has, he's been accused of killing the um, four Idaho students, that the prosecution came out and said they're seeking the death penalty. And the next day, the state of Idaho said, because there's such a shortage of medication starting July 1st, we're going to give you all the option of a firing squad as well. Nice. That's <laughs> so, so sweet. I know. So I'm hoping Brian has a choice. Well, I hope it goes better. In South Carolina, didn't a judge come back and say it was it was um, inhumane or something and they can't use the firing squad? I think that was up for debate, but I don't ever know. I don't know whatever happened with that. I don't either. We'll we'll give y'all an update when we figure that out. When we figure that out. Yeah. So that's just some housekeeping on some stuff. Good. Piper, you're being very needy and you need to go. This is ridiculous. We're just recording. We're not doing the do si do. I have a murder to talk about. Oh, I wondered. I'm I'm sitting here thinking about that million dollar pound cake and all that amaretta upstairs. And gosh darn it, I've come across a cherry rum pie. So y'all might look out for a cherry rum pop. I love it. I love cherries and I love rum. So I mean, come on. The two together have to be super good. I didn't even know. I didn't know there was such a thing. We're having it. Well, can we tell them why we know there's such a thing? Yes, we were at the nail salon. <laughs> yes. Seeing our favorite people, they're our family. And we happen to sit down next to a couple that were in from out of town. And they have a farm in the mountains of Virginia. Yes. Right where the Blue Ridge kind of goes along with the Appalachian Trail. Sorry. So they, um, so off the Appalachian Trail, they have so a farm. So they're in that area, like in... Kind of near Bristol. Lebanon. Virginia, Mm -hmm. so kind of close to West Virginia, Tennessee, all of that. And they were in there getting their pedicure. They had come into town and delivered some pies. Yes. this fantastic woman makes cherry pie. She makes all sorts of pies. With spiced rum in it. Yes. Holy cow. I'm excited about this. You'll have to check them out. It's Highlands 
farms, islands, like in Scot- Scotland. Yes, as in as if you were in Scotland. Scotland farms. Check out their website. It's yeah. really fun. But and they and they deliver pies to places you can call and see if they deliver to your area because. I'm excited to find. Oh, there's an apple caramel one or apple bourbon. Bourbon. There's a bur- an apple, apple bourbon. bourbon. I wish it was called bourbon apple because yeah. then it would be like bourbon with a little bit of apple. Oh, yeah. But I'm excited about that. And I will be ordering one of those pies from her. Yes. And they have a Facebook page. So I'd yes, follow their do. page on Facebook because that's probably where all the updates are going to go. Now, I know that cherry season is done, but. Apple, Apple is coming, coming up. Yes. And if you all do go and like their paint, send them a note and let them know that the sugar-coated murder girls told you about them. Indeed. Because we did tell them we would give them a shout out. And I, I hope, I don't think that they're going to listen to the podcast, but oh, if gosh, somebody no. could just let them know, hey, I heard about you on the sugar-coated murder podcast. Yeah. That would be really cool. That would be fantastic. So, yes. And when you do that, tag us and then we can be like, yeah, we told y'all. And I didn't ask her for the recipe because that's tacky. It is very but tacky. But I did find one online because I hadn't heard of such a pie. And uh-huh. now I can't stop thinking about I'm it. I'm excited. I'm very excited. I As mean, a matter Salem of fact. Jerry, isn't that a spice? Yes, pie? it is. Oh, it's going to be a. I a think I have some Jerry of that. You don't pie. even have to. You don't even have to buy it. Oh Lord, sugar. Yeah, I got some. I might start soaking my cherries tomorrow. I feel like you should do it right now tonight <laughs> after we record. Like get your tushy up there and do it. No, I don't got cherries at home. Oh, that's right. Well, the store's right up the street. That's all, all I'm right. saying. Face it, dating sucked in your 20s, gets worse in your 30s, and your 40s, forget it. It's a cesspool out there, and we're your flotation device. Join us weekly for saucy chat, ridiculous love gurus, and MILF-worthy fun to spice up your life. The MILF MILF and and Me Me Podcast. Podcast. Every Wednesday on your favorite pod platform. And the MILFandMePod.com. The MILF MILF and and Me Podcast. Easter's in full bloom at Whole Foods Market, with great deals on spiral-cut bone-in ham and leg of lamb. Both crowd pleasers. Round out your spread with quiche deviled eggs and delicious catering platters from prepared foods. Oh, and remember to pick up a Whole Foods Market bunny cake from the bakery. Strap for time? They cater too. With delicious options available without the effort. Find hundreds of Easter deals and delights now at Whole Foods Market. One more horsey ride, please. This living room rodeo moment made possible by Emory Orthopedics and Spine Center. When dad needed back surgery, he came to Emory. The difference? Advanced research and top surgeons to get it done right the first time. Giddy up. In a fast-paced world, every day brings new challenges and new opportunities. At Strayer University, we know a thing or two about getting and staying ahead of change. For over 130 years, We've been providing students like you with innovative tools, customized support, and an education built to empower you. So you can find your way forward and always keep striving. Visit Strayer.edu to learn more. Talk murder to me. Okay, so this murder that I'm doing today was sent to us by a listener. A listener, not a fan, but a listener. I know, I don't like to say fan. I know. A listener, and her name is Erin. So, hey, Erin, we're doing, hey. we're not doing your murder. We're doing the murder case you sent us. Thanks, Erin. Thanks, Erin. I'm going to take you back to July of 1989. All right, girl. It's hot. It is hot. In July of 89. Yes, it is. Hot. It is hot. It's hot right now, too. I'm going to talk about this fellow named Dean Scott. Phillips. Now, you know, in the South, men go by their middle name. <laughs> He's known as Scott to his friends and family. <laughs> He's from Sandston, the Sandston community or Sandston, Virginia, which is in Henrico County, just outside of Richmond. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. He graduated from Highland. Oh, Highland, another one. Oh, my gosh. All signs are pointing for us to go oh, to I Scotland. Just got a Oh, yeah. oh, we're going to Scotland. <laughs> Seems like we're all going to Scotland. I mean, you've got the perfect Scottish accent. I know. I know. So he graduated from Highland Springs High School and was enrolled at Virginia Tech for the fall. Okay. Yes. This this murder just sounds so familiar. The setting of it, the premise of it, the timing of it, it's just it like rings Deja vu. Oh. He was a baseball player in high school and a swimmer, and he was planning to swim competitively at Virginia Tech. Nice. Ken's mama described him as a funny, mouthy teenager (laughs) who was confident about his emerging manhood. Oh. Yes. Friends remember Scott as always striving to make others laugh, 
They also said while he was a fierce competitor, he wanted to be friends with everyone. Aw. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Scott was working at a roofing job his for his summer job before leaving for college. He was God working for a love him. roofing oh company. Lord, no, you, you talk about hot. That's roofers. Yeah, I mean, good golly. Yeah. Also working at the same roofing company was a classmate of Scott's named James Matthew Miller, who went by Matthew. Go figure. <laughs> On top of being classmates, the two youths, were, <laughs> they were, youths. Yeah, the two youths, they were frenemies. They had had uh, a couple of arguments between them during high school, but it never got physical. But they definitely, you know, I would say they were jawing at each other. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, kind like of jawing. Off, kind yeah. Of. After graduation, they seemed less bothered by each other and they got along fine at the roofing company as co-workers. So, you know, the beef was squashed. That's good news. And remember, Scott wanted to be everyone's friend. He seemed to get past things very easily. As a matter of fact, Matthew invited Scott over to ride a three-wheeler and target shoot in a swamp out near the Chickahominy River one afternoon. Oh, my goodness. Sounds um, very mosquito-y. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> Unfortunately, Scott accepted this invitation on July 26, 1989. Only one of those boys exited that the swamp that day alive. Mm, mm, mm. Matthew Miller went home to his parents while Scott's lifeless body lay concealed in a wooded area near the swamp for two days. Two days. Miller had shot Scott Phillips first in the back, and then as Scott lay helpless on the ground, Miller shot him three more times in the torso and delivered one final shot to his head with his AK-47 semi-automatic rifle. Whoa! An AK-47, they they come in semi-automatic or automatic. Semi-automatic, you have to pull the trigger each time you want to shoot a bullet. Okay. Automatic, you pull the trigger and hold it and it sprays bullets. Yeah. Exactly. That is exactly the sound that it made. Yes. In the cartoons. Why would Matt Miller, age 17, do this to a friend or frenemy, anybody? Yeah. Well, two days after Miller killed Scott and dragged his body under some brush to conceal his body and then took his keys and hid Scott's car, he went to the police and told them what he had done, but he told him it was an accident. He then led the police to Scott's car and his body out in the swamp. My God. So the police took him at his word, (laughs) but they still needed to investigate. I don't know, because he voluntarily walked in there. All right. In his statement, Miller had told them the two had argued and struggled over the gun, which had gone off accidentally. But he refused to talk about how the other four shots had found their way into (laughs) Scott's body. Right. He was released to his parents on a $10,000 bond. Wow. The police spoke with him a few more times and noticed that the story kept changing. Oh. And then when the medical examiner's report came out, the truth did too. That's when police knew that Miller had shot Scott in the back first, not at close range. And then he stood over Scott's body and took his time shooting three more into the torso. Oh, and no. eventually shot him in the head. Oh. When they start speaking with peers of the two, they find out that Miller had harbored a deep hatred for Scott, but Scott didn't know about it. Oh. And Miller often talked about how he wanted to get rid of him or kill him. Oh, my gosh. And Scott didn't know. And, of course, Scott would never have gone out on a you know, an adventure in the swamp with this kid had he known that the guy was saying he was going to kill him. Exactly. They go to trial and there's a psychiatrist there for the defense who says that Miller was consumed with his delusional psychosis when he killed Scott Dean and therefore was not responsible for what happened. What? A psychologist for the defense, because they had to get both the psychiatrist and the psychologist, then said that Miller responded to stress by over-control and his psychosis could have appeared during the act of this murder. So he he possibly could have been in a psychosis, therefore not responsible. That was the defense. A psychiatrist for the prosecution said Miller was not impaired or afflicted or affected to the point that he did not know right from wrong. The defense talked about bullying and said that Scott had often bullied Matthew in school. Nobody ever corroborated that. Right. I mean, you would think that... That the kids, the peers, the first yeah. thing they would have said is, it doesn't surprise me because Scott was always picking on him or whatever. Nobody ever brought that up. Right. I think it was all in Matthew's head. Oh, the other thing the defense said was that he was in ROTC. 
Matt was. And he was obsessed with the military, which made it easy for him to kill. Okay. I don't know. I guess they're military blaming now and ROTC blaming. Because I got to tell you, 99.9% of the kids that come out of ROTC do not murder their friends. No. So you have the wherewithal to invite him to To go out. To invite him to hide his body, to... What to catch him off guards and shoot him in the back? Right, hide his body, like drug him and th- and put his body somewhere else, not where it happened, and then took the keys out of the kid's pocket, took his car and drove it somewhere else and parked it. Oh my god! So gosh. that's not insanity. No, that's not <laughs> insanity. That's not psychosis. No, no, it is not. It's not. There was a lot of discussion, and I think one of the psychiatrists said that. Throughout school, Matthew had low self-esteem and that he often compared himself to Scott, who was a swimmer, a baseball player, quite popular, and a very good-looking kid. Right. And was from a very well-to-do family. Just just an all-around, he had a great life. Right. And I guess Matthew didn't feel like he had that life. So he had a, a bit of jealousy towards Scott as well as a deep seat, which I think turned into a deep seated hatred. Right. I don't think that Scott was bullying anybody, but that's just my opinion. I never read anything in any of the court documents where anybody except for the defense said that Scott had bullied this kid. Right. He just couldn't let go of his hatred for whatever reason. Mm. Scott's mom also said that Scott had a gold chain that he always wore that was missing. God, this is really, that's Isn't crazy. This creepy? Isn't yes. this creepy? And he had about $200 in his pocket no that was gone. Are you kidding me? I'm not this kidding. Is, are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. It's just the parallels are, I get chills every time I think about it. The parallels are unbelievable. And this was 89? July of 89. Whoa. Yeah. It's really weird. So it would have been in the papers in Virginia. It would have been. Yeah. It would have been. Yeah, I would imagine probably in the Franklin, Virginia area even. Uh, well, I will tell you that my sources, not my sources, <laughs> my sources <laughs> were the Richmond Times-Dispatch and the Daily Press out of the Newport News, Virginia yeah. area. Yeah. So, and that, those are the main, those are two of the main papers that the Franklin, Virginia area would get if they wanted something besides the community Tidewater News. Wow. Isn't that just chilling? insane chilling the thing about it is is this happened in 89 the court case didn't didn't go they didn't go to trial until 90 right so i'm not sure these details came out until 1990 in the paper it's not like so we didn't you know now you watch every hearing that they have before they ever go to trial i don't even understand half the hearings that these people go to i always think this is the court case this is the trial and they're like oh there that was a hearing and i'm like when is the person on trial like they keep showing up to court no but if a if a kid murdered his classmate it would have been in the press prior to trial yes the so i did read where it's the day after it's like when after they charged the the kid Yes, it was in there. It was like a little blurb. It wasn't like a huge write up until maybe before they went to trial. So maybe late in late 89, there, there was a big thing. There was a huge article in the Daily Press when it interviewed a lot of Scott Dean's peers and his mom. Her name's Burl. She talked about because they had a picture of her at his grave and she talked about how she still finds poems and little trinkets and letters and stuff that his friends go to. And she said that his she knew that his friends were visiting his grave his grave very often. And it was just for the community, those kids I think the name of the article was Our Kids Lost Their Innocence That Summer. Right. Because it just affected so many of them. Right. You know, and they interviewed like Scott's best friend and he was just like, I just, you know, I can't believe he's not here. I just, I go to call him and I have to remind myself he's not here. Right. So there was a lot of write up about it. So it just makes you, I don't know, I, the parallels, we, you can't, like, this is mystical as far as the parallel with the gold chain and the $200 in his pocket. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. And for listeners out there, we wrote a book. Oh uh, yeah, we're 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 talking about the murder case that we wrote the book about. Right. If you haven't read the book, shame on you. You should get the book and read it. <laughs> it's called Click Click Click, and it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. There's our selfless plug. The parallels oh, between the, these are just yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the murder and and that we wrote about happened in 1990, in February of 1990. Yeah. And what you're talking about happened in 1989 in July. Yeah, plenty yeah. of time for the 
for there to be press about it. Interesting. Just weird. Yeah. Yeah. You can say weird. I, I'm I mean, say it's just crazy. So anyway, they go to trial. They do, you know, they go through the trial and he is found guilty of first degree murder and uh, commission of a felony with a firearm. Okay. So that's two felony charges. He got life in prison. But back then in Virginia, life in prison, what didn't did we say? Life. It didn't mean life. They, they, it's like 25 I years. I think they had, the, after 25 years, they'd be oh, eligible. Cool. I've not been able to find where this kid was paroled yet, but I haven't, like, that's a deep dive. Like, that's a really extensive deep dive. And I'm, I intend to go find out if he's been paroled. They never could prove that the guy stole the necklace and the money. Oh, oh, because so if they, they had, so they couldn't charge him with theft. Theft, okay. Because that would have gotten more tacked onto his. Right, right. Yeah, so they couldn't prove that. Yeah. It was just a crazy story that just the more I read it, I was just like, wait a minute, what story am I reading? Right, yeah. It was weird. Wow. In the same time frame and the whole, mil- like, obsessed with military and stuff like yeah. that. Because, you know, West ended up going to VMI. Right. It was... Unbelievable. unbelievable and piper doesn't like it at all no she doesn't like it very unsettled but she's story. unsettled and i don't blame her it's unsettling babe <laughs> it's quite unsettling well, yes that was, that was crazy yeah. aaron rest in peace scott dean he didn't deserve that he was a great kid with an incredible future yeah and just people just loved that kid he was a funny i mean a funny mouthy teenage boy who his mother adored him but she could strangle him in a minute right yeah <laughs> you know just that typical you know i'm getting ready to turn 18 i'm a man now and she just funny and he made everybody laugh around him he was such a great kid and it just he didn't deserve it he didn't do one damn thing to deserve any of that no totally uncalled for yeah so that's my moita interesting stuff yes yes well guys we freaking love y'all we just love y'all we do we really i mean you're a friend i mean you are our friend even though you don't really know us we feel like you do yes (laughs) but please do not disappoint us no you need to stay sweet and don't murder because if you kill people even if you are our friend yes we're Uh, we're totally talking about you Uh, and if you're our friend, we're going to divulge a lot of secrets. Oh, yeah. We're telling all of it. <laughs> we're telling all of it. So <laughs> we'll keep it in the vault. And the only thing that unlocks the vault is you committing murder. Exactly. And then it's it's balls to the wall with oh, all oh, the secrets. Speaking of murder, oh, I guess thought there was what? a bug. There's no bug. Okay. There's no bug. <laughs> uh, we have tickets to CrimeCon. <gasps> yeah, we do. We're so excited. We're going, we're going in September. So if any of y'all are going to go, let us know because we would love to see you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really excited. Listen, so if enough people show up, we can have our, our Thanksgiving. We, don't we can have yeah, Thanksgiving. That we can want. Yeah. I know. You're exactly right. We'll just need somebody to invite us over and cook, but yeah. I mean we can still no have it. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. So we did it. Stay sweet. Don't murder. If you kill people, we'll talk about you. Hey guys. Have a great week. Have a great week. And if you don't mind, hit the like, subscribe, give us a five-star rating. We could really use it. And if you've read our book and you haven't rated us yet, please go out there and do so. Because we have some people that work behind the scenes that every time we get a five-star rating, somebody else goes in and gives us a one-star rating. It's like a trigger. It's like a they've got a tripwire or something. So just keep, keep those five stars coming. We love you. And we'll see you on the flip side. Bye. Bye now. Sugar. What sugar? (laughs) What happened? Well, I was reviewing my notes and I just noticed that I'm so stupid because I just renamed this kid that died and I don't want to do that. His name, for real, I think I've said it right one time and that was it. His name was Dean Scott Phillips and I call him Scott Dean for some reason the whole time. And and I think it's because I'm thinking Dean Scott, but he went by Scott and his last name is Phillips. Scott Phillips, rest in peace. I'm sorry that I just completely flubbed on your name. And, but I just, I wanted to come on here and do a correction, sugar, because I I just feel real bad if I don't. Oops, you did it again. (laughs) Brittany, (laughs) see, that's not fair. I couldn't do my Brittany, but you did your Uh, Brittany. She really needed to be there for this one. I know. So, yeah, anyway, guys, sorry about that. This has been Sugar Coated Murder Podcast.
a deliciously entertaining true crime podcast. Like what you heard? You can always explore past episodes by visiting sugarcoatedpod.com. Don't forget to like our Facebook fan page and share with friends. Thanks for listening to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube.